Hello friends, welcome back to Wheel S Academy. We are going to discuss something called uh, cloud of networking, where we'll be having multiple concepts. Okay, so few concepts from there we we will discuss theoretically, and few will I show the demo. Okay, so I have decided to you know split these sessions into two parts. One is theory. Okay, so we'll. And then second part is demo. So we'll literally go on our different platform and we'll configure our VPCs, our, our DLBs, or uh, we'll deploy our applications on single worker, multiple worker, those things we'll see, okay? So since today we are going to discuss every part, so we'll first see that what all things comes when we talk about cloud of networking, okay? So when we start talk about cloud of networking, let's take this scenario. Let's say I have for A. Better I'll go to my case board and I'll try to explain it there. Okay. So let's say I have for A here and I have my data center. Okay. Inside data center, I have let's say database. I'm taking a simple example. Now I have application deployed on any any point platform. This is my any point platform. And I have mule application deployed over here. This mule application try want to access this database, which is inside my firewall. Okay. So to connect this database, we have multiple ways of connecting your data center, okay? First one is, first option is we have something called VPN. We can go ahead and connect this data center via VPN. Second option I have is, we can go ahead and connect via AWS directly. Okay, I'll talk about it, all these concepts. We have option called VPC peering. We have recently added, I, I won't say recently, it's it's the another option, which is called transit gateway. So these options are there to connect this data center, but to get this option, we need to have our dedicated virtual private cloud, okay? Without this dedicated virtual private cloud, we cannot configure VPN, we cannot configure any of this option. If we don't have virtual private cloud, VPC, we'll be having something called shared VPC. And shared VPC, you cannot configure anything, okay? So if I want to access data center, I cannot deploy my new applications in shared VPC, no way. Okay, to connect this data center and to access the database, I need to create virtual private cloud, which, which, which is our VPC. Now to create VPC, there are some considerations. Now this VPC, we need to create under some region. And globally, we have 12 regions. In case of Clouder, we have 12 regions. We can select any region from there. But Select that region which is close to your data center. Close. Okay. So to avoid or minimize latency. So this is consideration when you when you when you want your VPC to be used. First thing is the region. Second thing is very important again. That is called size of your VPC. How big? VPC is nothing but a space on a cloud, okay? Now, how big this base space should be? This will be decided by IP address or IP range, we can say. And these IP ranges are nothing but private IP addresses. Now, your organization has to decide 
how big this VPC. So there are multiple uh, parameters we'll decide. First one is how many APIs you want to deploy. Based on that, you can decide the size of the VPC. Okay. So the size of the VPC you can define in number of APIs. So there is there is a syntax, or we can say the template, how the size we define. So there will be a starting IP, starting IP address. IP. So that will be, and then we'll be writing some magical number over here. So this will decide the minimum size of. And then starting address slash 16, if I write, then this will be a biggest VPC. Then. This is the smallest VPC you can create. And this with slash 16, you can create biggest VPC. Now let's try to understand what is the 24 and 16 magic number. OK, so let's say my starting address, starting address, let's say so, uh, and it will be IP version 4. Okay? I'm not talking about IP version 6. Okay. So if you represent any IP version 4 address, it will be something like 8 digits, then 8 digits, then 8 digits, then 8 digits. There will be 4 blocks. Right? In between, there will be a dot. Now, when I'm saying slash 24, right? From left to right, we need to read, okay? From left to right. So, 8 plus 8 plus 824. Till this point, you need to fix this. You, you cannot change this value. So, for example, let's say my starting address is 10 dot one dot one dot zero. So, this will be 10 dot one dot one. Now, this zero starting with zero, okay? I can change this value, okay? And if digit over here, either it will be zero or one. That means I can go at max two raised to zero to two raised to eight, okay? And the two raised to eight is nothing but two fifty five. Okay, so this many address IP addresses will get it. So this will become your first. And then 10 dot one dot one dot two fifty five. This will be your last IP address of your VPC. If I apply same formula for our slash sixteen, okay, then eight plus again left to right, okay. So eight eight sixteen. So that means till here, I cannot change these values. So ten dot one will be always fixed. I can change this to blocks, okay. So first value, we can start with 10 dot. So if I go with the same address again, the so first address will be this. The last address will be 10 dot one. This will fix. You can change at max value. You can have it to 25, uh, 255, 255. Okay, so if you go with this, two raised to power 16, that means you'll get around 65, 65 here. Okay. So with minimum size, you will get 256 and with maximum size, you will get 65. Now randomly, we cannot pick the VPC size. Okay. So as I mentioned, you need to decide how many APIs you want to deploy. Okay. You need to consider scalability. You need to consider down, you know, zero downtime. You need to consider your future. All those parameters will come into picture. To satisfy all those uh, conditions and parameters and situations, there is a thumb rule called number of APIs into 10. We can go with this formula. And this number will satisfy. And based on this number, let's say this number comes around 1000. Okay. So with slash 24, I'll be getting 256. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's say I want 1000 IP address. Okay, or this is my VPC size, let's say we have decided. Now let's say I got a starting address as 10.1.1.0. Now, what will be this magical number? Okay. So we know that with 24, if I go, uh, with 24, if I go, I'll be getting 250. 
Now I need to go down. Okay. So with 23, I'll be getting 512. And with 22, I'll be getting 1024. So if I need only 1000, then this is the, the, the magical number. I can write it here. Slash 24. This is enough for my PPC. Okay. So first thing we have decided region. So let's say I wanted to go to Ohio. Second, I got the cider block. So I say side cider block. I got it. Let's say 10.1.0 slash 22. Now, this is the required very important thing. Second one is cider block. And third one is name of my VPC. So for VPC, these three things are very important. Why I'm saying, once you create this, we cannot change. We can't change these three parameters. If you want to change any of these parameters, whether you want to change region or cider block or name of your VPC, then you need to undeploy all the applications deployed under this VPC, delete them, then delete this VPC. Then you can change the region. You can change the title block. You can change the name. Then deploy all those applications again. This will be very expensive process and it will have downtime. It will have downtime. So when we are creating VPCs, we need to be thoughtful, good discussion, then decide and come up with the, the magical number, this magical number, thousand. Okay, so this is how we decide the VPC type. Hope you know it's it's clear and uh, uh, making sense. Okay, let's go back to our our presentation. So VPC will give you the dedicated space, and from that VPC you can connect your data centers, and then you can access your data center assets to to the applications deployed under VPC. So we understood that why why we need it, right? Okay. Now let's go to the second slide. As I mentioned, we we go with this cider blocks range. Okay. When we create the file account, let's say we'll be getting shared load balance. Okay. So we'll we we'll talk about the properties of shared load balancer, and then we'll see if I deploy any application in shared VPC behind any any shared load balancer, how my application will get access. Okay. What all URLs will come into this? Okay. So when we deploy any application on, on Cloud Hub without any dedicated VPC, we generally see URL in runtime management. That URL will have some template. Okay. So that URL will have template something like app name dot region dot cloud hub dot i okay this kind of url we get it in case of shared load balancer in case of shared vpc okay so let's have a look at it let's say this is a uh, before that before that let's go and i missed one thing okay so we came back from the the, the discussion where we decided vpc okay so the diagram i have on my slide i try to map this with our you uh, know uh, india map Okay, so this cloud is like a our country. Okay, so let's say India. Then in, within this country, we have regions. So how many regions we have? We have global 12 regions in cloud. We can select any one of them. Under that region, we have something called, so these regions are like the states. Then we have we, under each region, we have availability zones. We call it AZs, availability zones. Okay. Based on the region, this availability will change. So max we have four, four availability zones we can have. And these availability zones are like the districts, Dis districts under states. Okay. So hierarchy will be cloud up, then regions, then availability zone. Now where can I create this VPC? So always VPC will be associated with the region. And this VPC will get span across availability zones. 
Okay. Now you know how to decide the size, decide the region. So one region can have multiple VPCs. You can see that one is there in second one is there. Okay. If you go with the default license, okay, you'll get two VPCs. One you can dedicate for production, one you can dedicate to non-product. And why do we split like this? So security point of view, you should you should handle production in dedicated space and non-product in dedicated space. That will you know give you more secured network. Okay. So on this slide, if you see under region, you can have multiple VPCs, and one VPC can span across the availability zones, and one VPC associated with only one region. So the region to VPC, if I go, this is one to many. But VPC to region, if I go, it's one to one. Okay, one VPC can have one region only. One VPC cannot span across regions. It will span across availability zones, keep that in mind. Okay, so hope that is clear. Cloud Hub is like a country, region is like a state, availability zones are like a district, and our VPC will span across districts. Okay, and it will belong to only one region. And when they're creating this VPC, we need to create this VPC close to our data centers. Okay, <clears throat> okay let's take the setup first use case where let's deploy my application under Cloud Hub shared with you. Okay, shared means it will get shared with all other accounts, but you'll get dedicated space. Nobody will access your app, your space. Okay. So this will get created under shared VPC if I'm if I'm deploying anything. Okay. Let's say I have deployed one app on one worker. So let's say my app name is app itself. I have deployed on one worker. Now, as I mentioned, when we deploy. In Runtime Manager, we will see something like this, right? This is the template of the URL which is visible in Runtime Manager. That URL belongs to, this URL belongs to shared load balancer. Okay? This URL won't belong to you, your worker or your app. This is belongs to, actually, when I trigger this URL from any REST client, it will trigger the shared load balancer. Now, what is the shared load balancer? Let's talk about this. So, we talked about VPC. Now let's talk about shared load balancer. Shared load balancer always first thing. Okay, I I I'll just go ahead and clean my slide first. Okay, the so first thing. This component is free. Okay, we don't need to pay anything for this. Second one is this will be sitting outside of our VPC. Outside of VPC. Third thing is. This will be highly available. Okay, highly available. So it will get deployed on three workers. In the in demo, I show you that shared load balancer, whether it's deployed on three worker or not. Okay. Since it is it is shared among other accounts, also, there will be a rate limiting enable on this. Rate limit. Okay. Since we have rate limit, there will be a low throughput. Throughput will be less down. Here, when we are talking about shared load balancer, there will be a fixed port forwarding. Fixed, okay? We cannot change this. And that port forwarding is always 80, we we'll get mapped to 8081. And 443, which is the default port for HTTPS, that we get mapped to 8082. This is for HTTP. This is for HTTPS. This is fixed. We cannot change this. Point number seven, there will be URL mapping, fixed URL mapping, default URL mapping. Our SLB will always calls or invoke public URL of 
mule worker. Now let's talk about these points. Let me clean this first of all. So hope it will be free. It's outside of VPC. It's running always on three worker. Rate limiting will be enabled since it is shared. Throughput will be less. Port forwarding is fixed 80 to 801, 442 to 802. Seven URL mapping, URL uh, mapping is fixed. We cannot change this and always this will be will be calling public URL of new worker. Let's talk about what is this public URL. Okay. So let me clean and then let's go one by one. <clears throat> okay. Now let me talk about second point. Let's say I deploy application, one application on two workers now. Now every new worker, let me add that. Every mule worker whether it belongs to load balancer or app every mule worker will get public url plus ip along with that we the worker will get private url plus private ip this public IP will be coming from the AWS IP range and this will be coming from the data center IP range. Okay, the CIDR block, whatever we have mentioned for our VPC, from that, this private IP address will be coming. Again, this also I will be showing while the demo, whether this private URL is getting resolved into private IP address or CIDR block of our, our VPC or not. And this public will be coming from, we won't be having any control on this. So how this URL, public URL look like, how this private URL will look like for our mule worker. Let's have a look at it. Okay. So if you, if you go in you know, a look at my, so Cloud Hub will maintain a routing table. And inside this routing table, all public DNS record will be there, private DNS record will be there. Okay. So now, as I mentioned, this shared load balancer always gets deployed on three worker. And we mentioned that every worker will get one public and one private. Okay. Now let's have a look at it. This routing table will have CNAME record mapping and plus A record mapping. Now, what is this C name? What is this A? C name record means the URL will get mapped to URL. A record means the URL will get mapped to IP address. This is the difference. Okay. So the top record is C name record, and below that, all are A records. You can see that. So First, so if I if I if I take this first record out, these three records belong to shared load balance. These three records belong to shared load balance. Since this guy is deployed on three worker, you can see three IP addresses, but you will get only one URL, which is this. This URL we get resolved into three IP addresses. One of the IP addresses will pick for our request. Then my app, app Lucy, I have deployed on two workers. We can see that there is a URL and then we have two public address, IP address. One belong to one worker, other belong to other worker. So you can see that 132 belong to this worker, 220 belong to this worker. Same worker will get private IP address also and private URL also. So look at the private URL, how it looks. So if we talk about the shared load balancer URL, so app name dot region dot cloud dot IO. If I prefix mule hyphen worker hyphen to that URL, it becomes the public URL of mule worker. And if I add internal in between, okay, so mule hyphen worker hyphen internal hyphen app name dot, it becomes the private email. 
Shared load balancer is also public URL. This mule worker also is public URL, but there is a difference when we are invoking these two URLs. Okay, so we'll see that in third one. Okay, hope I'm clear. See, these private IP addresses these are coming from the cider block range. If you, if you see the cider block range, this will be coming from the these are these are these are private IP addresses. Okay. Okay. Let me clean this and let's go to the third point where we'll be looking at how we can invoke this. So as I mentioned, this belongs to shared load balance URL. Okay. And default IP at uh, port number will be 80. When I'm triggering this from any any REST client, maybe a uh, postman, then it goes to first it goes to shared load balancer and shared load balancer will have port forwarding and URL mapping. By using those two things, it will build this URL. And this URL will go. So if I draw a line, first it will go to shared load balancer. Shared load balancer will build this URL. And this URL, if you see, this belongs to your worker. Now, which worker will be triggered? Because two workers are running this app. Now, when this URL is getting built, this will go to that routing table. And in that routing table, if you see this URL is getting resolved into two IP addresses. Now, which one to pick? That will be decided by algorithm called round robin. Now, round robin will go in top to bottom. So, first one, 132 will be filled up. Then, if I second request come, then it will it will go for 228. Then third request come, it will go to 132. Then again 220. So one by one uniformly it will distribute that load. If your URL is getting resolved into more than one IP address, then only the round robin will come into. If you deploy app on single worker, round robin won't come into any piece. Okay. Okay. So point number three. Let me clear my slide again. So point number is three. So port forwarding and URL mapping that will take your your call from REST client to your to your mule worker. Okay. So you can see the port request. So it goes from here to shared load balancer. Shared load balancer at the end of the day, we need IP address. So that IP address 132 picked up 80, it will go and execute on this 132. If same request, if I trigger again, it will go to 228. Okay. Okay. So we are going via SLB. That's the reason load balancing is happening. Load balancing is guaranteed here. Guaranteed, okay. But can I trigger directly my mute worker? Yes. Let's go to point number five. We can go to this address and this time we'll be bypassing your shared load balancer. Now, again, same DNS record will be will be will be scanned. And this record is actually getting resolved to IP address. So randomly, this time randomly, one of the IP address will be picked up and your job will be done. So here we cannot guarantee load balance if I directly hit the new work. Okay, hope all five points are clear. Let's jump on to now a dedicated space and dedicated load balance. In previous slide, we talked about customer shared VPC and shared load balancer. Okay. So before jumping onto the dedicated load balancer and dedicated space, what I'll try to do is I'll try to uh, list down the properties of shared load balance so that we can compare with the dedicated load balance. Okay. So first one is <clears throat> the free. Okay. Second one, it's it's having fixed port for port forwarding fixed url mapping low throughput if you see shared advanced urls always they will be having like 
cloud hub dot view okay so we cannot have this uh you know vanity urls here okay six always you know the uh i mean basically we cannot we cannot customize anything over here customize in the sense we cannot uh have our own url we cannot upload our ssl over here we cannot change our url mapping we cannot change the port port forwarding all these things are there on our shared database okay now let's jump on to the dedicated part okay okay same scenario we'll take it here also so now this time customer vpc this is not shared vpc now when we are talking about customer vpc we'll be talking about tidal block we'll be talking about region okay so now my vpc dedicated vpc is there in ohio and this is my site block so keep this in mind what is the starting address 10.100.1.0/24 that means how many ip uh, how many ip addresses will get 256 so 256 will get okay so now one app i have deployed on one worker other app i have deployed on two workers now in this case when the private addresses internal addresses or private addresses of each worker those will be coming from my Block okay. Okay. Now, when we create a dedicated VPC or customer VPC, we'll be getting four firewall rules. Four firewall rules. Okay. Two for our private ports. Two for our public ports. Okay. So eight zero nine one and eight zero nine two always will be accessible via. the within vpc and 8081 8082 we call them public ports right because those will be accessible from public internet so 0.0.0./0 that means public internet 10.100.1.0/24 that means my vpc okay so point number 1 four firewalls any point of time we can change this after creating okay you can edit we can change we can delete Point number two. Now dedicated load balancer. So dedicated load balancer. Point number one. It's not free. It's optional but not free. If you want, you need to pay for it. Not free but optional. I put it this way. Okay. So it will be always inside the VPC. Inside VPC. it will get the url template so url template we can see the point number point number uh, point number 2 fully qualified domain name so it has a template if you select your uh, dlb name as my dlb then my dlb dot lb dot any point dns dot net this part is fixed this dlb will be if you go to the base license it will get deployed on two worker again during demo i'll show you whether the dlb is deployed on two worker or not okay this guy will also since it is deployed on two worker this guy also gets a public url and private url so public url look like this you can see on my screen and private url you just need to prefix internal in front of it internal Ipen lb name dot lb dot any point dns dot net. I will show you that in point number three. Okay. Third point that is you know you know you get public URL plus private URL, and this guy will be put on two workers, two workers with this line. Okay. Point number four. This guy will always call. private new worker url new worker url in the previous slide we have seen that how that new worker a uh, private new worker url each 
each worker will have two URLs, public URL and private URL. Okay, and we have seen the how it looks. Okay, and port forwarding on this guy is always fixed. Fixed port forwarding. Okay. Port forwarding. So here 80, which is our HTTP, we get mapped to 8091. HTTPS 443, we get mapped to 8092. This is fixed, we cannot change. But we have advantages here. We can go ahead and we can, point number seven, we can go ahead and we can upload our certificates. Since this is dedicated to us, there will be high throughput on this side. There is no rate limit. This is completely dedicated for us. Point number nine, if I want to control the public traffic, inside my VPC, there is no option on shared load balancer. Here we can whitelist. The whitelisting option is there. We can go ahead and say that, hey, I want to whitelist some specific cider block only. So from that cider block only traffic will be allowed. That also we can do here. Okay. Point number 10. This will be within VPC as an inside the VPC. We can have multiple DLBs inside the VPC. Okay, so now if I go with the proper hierarchy, so Cloud Hub, then inside Cloud Hub, we'll be having the regions. Inside regions, we'll be having VPCs. Inside VPCs, we can have DLBs like this. Okay. And behind these DLBs, then we can have our API app. Like this hierarchy will be reason. Okay. Multiple reasons, we can have 12 reasons, we can have two VPCs, we can have two DLBs, and we can have n number of apps. This is how it, it's cloud up is one. One cloud up, 12 regions, two VPCs, two DLBs, and number of apps. This is how the hierarchy will look like in actual scenario. Okay. So let me, let me clean again my slide. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the point number three. So as I mentioned, this will get deployed on two workers. So you'll get two IP addresses. Have a look at it. These are public IP addresses. And it will get the internal URL also. As I mentioned, internal, you can prefix just in front of the uh, public URL and this URL, this uh, IP address, if you look at this side, these are coming from our title block. How look at it? 10.100.1.21, this is coming from our title range. So all the private URLs, either it's for DLB or for mute worker, everybody will get the IP uh, from this range. Okay. Okay. Now, how we can access our apps? So we'll be triggering our DLB URL. And now you see, see very closely. Now we are triggering internal mule worker URL. Now look at it. Mule hyphen worker hyphen internal app equal. Okay, which is my app. And then rest of the address is exactly a shared load balancer app. But DLB always triggers internal mule worker. SLB always triggers public mule worker URL. Port, if you closely see, 80 is getting mapped to 8091. Okay, so this is how we'll, we'll be triggering. So this call will do it from REST client. This will reach to our DLB. DLB internally builds this URL. This URL will go to that you know, routing table, DNS records. This URL will get resolved into two internal IP addresses. 
and which one will get picked up that will get decided on round robin algorithm so slb and dlb both use this round robin algorithm whenever there are more than one ip addresses belong to url whether it's a public url or private url round robin algorithm will be coming to picture. okay so point number four is clear hope it is clear then point number five Point number five, I'm showing you how we are invoking it. So this will go to DLB. DLB will decide uh, which I, you know IP to pick up based on the round robin algorithm. Now, can I access the shared load balancer? Yes. Our apps, if those apps are running on very, very important fine. If the app are running on 8081, and R8082, those can be triggered via SLB. Please keep this in mind. If the apps are running on 8091 and 8092, we cannot trigger it from SLB. Not possible. Those won't be, only be triggered via DLB because of port forwarding formula. We cannot change it. This 80 can be mapped to 8091 only by DLB. AT can be mapped to 8081 by SLB. So if app is running on 8091 or 92, then we cannot access it from shared load balance. If apps are running on 8081 or 82, then this cannot be accessible from dedicated load balance. This is fixed, okay? Hmm. So these six points will give you clear picture that if I have single load balancer, single dedicated load balancer, this is how we'll be accessing our applications. Now, generally we provide solutions to our client uh, with multiple uh, dedicated load balancer. Okay. So multiple, so one, D, one DLP will be representing external traffic, external traffic. And other DLB will be representing internal traffic. External traffic means that will go to my experience API. And internal traffic means my process API and my system API. So I don't want to expose this to, to my, my external world. Only I want to expose experience API. Okay. So we generally go with this two DLB options. Okay, so within one VPC, we'll be having two DLPs. One will be representing external traffic, another will be representing internal traffic. So let's have a look at it that. Now, solution with or architecture with two DLPs. Okay, same infra again. Now, this time, we'll be representing experience API separately and the internal API with the process. And now in this case, what we'll do? We'll deploy these applications either on 8091 or 8090. That means now we're fixing this can be accessible via DLB only, right? Okay, that we make sure. So point number one, we have created VPC and we have exposed our APIs on 8091 and 8092. Now in this case also, all private uh, IP addresses will be coming from my IP range, this type of block. Now I have stopped the SLB access. So if you remember on my firewall rules, I had four firewall rules. So for 80, 81 or 82, I have deleted those firewall rules. That means public access from outside, we cannot access this API. So this port number 8081 and 8082 not there. So immediately shared load balancer access is gone. This is gone. So now my shared load balancer, nothing can be accessible inside my VPC. So point number two, we block shared load balancer to access anything from my VPC. Then I purchase two dedicated load balancer, one to represent external traffic, another to represent internal traffic. So I name it properly to, you know, give more readability. So I said external DLB, internal DLB, and rest of the URL the same. 
this urls these dlbs will be having common default url mapping we can change this okay we can change this means uh, we can write this input path so we'll see that url mapping i'll give you during the demo so this app Radio load balancer will call only internal URL. We cannot change this. Call in, but we can figure out how to decide this app. Okay, app name. That for that we can write our our URL mapping rules. Okay, so we will write regular expressions, and that will decide. We can write multiple URL uh, mapping rules over there. One of them will be executed. So that we we'll see. Now point here is all apps are running on eight zero nine one or eight zero nine. And as per firewall rules, if you see anything, somebody is inside, whoever is inside my VPC, that guy can call this port. That means this load balancer also can call this experience API, process API, system API. So this is also inside. This guy also can call experience API and process API and system API. Now I want to control that. This guy can access only experience API. This access I want to block. Okay, so that can be blocked by using URL mapping. There is no other way. There is no other way. So we'll see that how via URL mapping we can block. Only this guy will be able to call experience API. Won't be able to call process API or system API. Okay, that one thing we'll see. Now, second thing is, since this is DLB and this is DLB, from outside these two guys can be reachable. This guy also can be reachable. This guy also can be reachable from outside. If I use their public uh, URL, which is which is this right? Whatever URL you see right now, this is public URL. Via this URL, I can access from outside. Now, I want to keep this internal DLB. Should be accessible within my my VPC. So we have something called whitelisting. So we'll do first whitelist. Let me clean my slide so you you'll be getting point number four very clear. So if you look at the point number four, what I'm saying is I'm saying boss, this DLB I'm whitelisting this traffic. Now this traffic is public internal. So this DLB can be accessible from public internet okay so from public internet now i have only one entry gate this is this is external DLB. this is the only gate i have to enter in my territory okay point number four point number five if you see on this dlb i have widely state my title block that means this dlb can be accessible from my CIDR range only. And this CIDR range means I can call this guy only from my, uh, within my VPC. We cannot access from outside. Okay. So now if you see the flow, the so first DLB will be triggered, then firewall will be executed, then app will be executed. Okay. So we need to be very careful. The so first DLB will be executed. Okay. And then the firewall rules will be okay. So this is the solution we provide to our clients generally. So to say, you know, split the external traffic, internal traffic with two different DLBs, and we control those DLBs. They should not call our APIs, private APIs, or public APIs by using URL mapping. Then we 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 decide or you know we configure those DLBs such a way that. Only one DLB, which is representing external traffic, that will get access from public internet. Other one, other internal DLB will be accessible within the within my VPC. So that will be used. That will be achieved via whitelisting or title block. Okay. Now let's go ahead. So we have seen shared VPC, shared load balancer. We have seen dedicated VPC, dedicated load balancer with single load balancer and with multiple load balancer. Okay, now let's talk about the rules. Okay, this is basically a default rule. When you get the uh, dedicated load balancer, when you create a dedicated load balancer, this is the default mapping rule we get. Now, what is this mapping rule? How this works? Okay, so let's try to understand. So there will be always four columns. Column number one, 
column number two, column number three, column number four. So let's talk about the easy part first. Okay, the column number four means on which protocol you want to direct redirect this traffic. This is this is this will decide. So whatever traffic is coming on DLV, on which protocol you want to divert this traffic, okay, or redirect this traffic or send this traffic. So that column will decide that. So as per my setting right now, it will it will get always transfer on HTTP. Okay, if I put HTTP. Third column, output path. Okay, whatever you build URL, okay, this will be appended over. If I write API here, okay, once you build the URL, that API will get added. This third column will, will get added. Now we'll see what URL we'll be building here. Okay, let's try to understand that. Let me bring my my page back. Okay. <clears throat> So the since we are talking about DLB, the URL template is fixed. What you are going to try? We are going to call new hyphen worker hyphen internal hyphen. Now this we need to decide what will be the app name, and the rest of the thing the region, and then cloud about IO, and then flow. Okay. I'm not writing this, everybody is aware of it. So I'm just keeping this. So always DLB will be triggering this UR. But now, before triggering this, we need to figure out what is the app name. Now let's say, let's say I went with this, this uh, uh, URL. Let's say this is the URL we have triggered it from outside. Okay. So for example, the URL is https colon slash slash let's say api hyphen dev dot example dot com slash let's say e-commerce and then slash let's say i get invite so basically it's trying to get the e-commerce invite okay now on DLP, let's say I have written the column number one. You know what is this? So let's say I have written. Yeah, this is the first. This is called regular expression. This regular expression will look at the URL. What is the incoming URL we are triggering? Now, uh, uh, reach to the to the to the dedicated load balancer. Now, this first forward slash will be compared with the first forward slash after domain name. This is called domain name. This is called subdomain name. Okay, so this is subdomain. This is domain. Now, after domain name, whatever first forward slash comes, that will be matched with this forward slash. Now, in between, there is some string. Yes. Do we have any forward slash after that? Yes. So, this value will come and sits in this variable called app. So, the value will come here is e commerce. This value will come and sits here. Second one is then we have second column. Okay. In the second column, we are saying target app is app. So whatever is we assign to this variable as it is to put it here. So this app will get replaced in this URL because this is same. We are not adding anything. We are not customized anything. Okay. Let's say column three has forward slash and column four has HTTP. Now before this URL, HTTP will be added because we want to uh, forward this traffic to this. HTTP protocol. This target app will be injected in this place. That means it will become minus a hyphen in commerce, then dot region, then dot rest of the thing, and the port number will be colon eight zero nine one or nine two. Okay. Now after this port number, what I want, what I have in the column three, forward slash. That's it. And everything, whatever is there in the rest of the rest of the URL, right? Till this, we have already scanned. 